how to divide complex numbers. The goal of this tutorial is to be able to answer questions like the ones you see on the screen. 3 plus i divided by 4 minus 2i or the one on the bottom. You can find this tutorial on our website mathwarehouse.com slash complex where there's a bunch of other goodies you can download free worksheets with answer keys, um, many other pr interactive um, practice problems on that web page as well as some other goodies like a, um, a complex number calculator. All right, before we dive into actually dividing complex numbers like we just looked at, we need to talk about something that is important. And let's, let's talk about the complex number 4 minus 2i. Um, you may remember from back when you were learning uh, Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 that if you multiplied x plus 3, times x minus 3, something special happened, right? You ended up with the difference of squares, x squared minus 1, and this, could, this would happen for anything. 2x plus 5 times 2x minus 5, right? a plus b, a minus b, would always give you a difference of squares. In this case, it would be 4x squared minus 25, right? a plus b times a minus b always ends up giving you a squared minus b squared. It was x squared minus 9 in this example, 4x squared minus 25 in this example. And what is interesting about this kind of um, pairing is that there is no middle term. Right? There is no x here. There's, no, there's just an x squared and there is a number. It turns out the same pattern holds true for complex numbers. If we multiply 4 minus 2i times 4 plus 2i, the middle term will go away. In fact, you'll see all i terms go away, and this is going to be key to dividing complex numbers. All right, so let's just perform our normal multiplication. I don't know how you learn to do this. Many people learn it via FOIL, multiplying the firsts, 4 times 4 or 16, and then the outers, 4 times 2i, which is 8i, the inners, this is going to be negative 8i, and the lasts, right, foil, and the last would be negative 2i times 2i, which would be negative 4i squared. So plus 8i minus 8i leads us to 16 plus, well, I'm sorry, 16 minus 4i squared because 8i minus 8i is 0. Now another interesting thing happens here because if you remember, i squared is negative 1, right? If you recall, i is the square root of negative 1, therefore i squared is negative 1. So this whole thing there can be replaced by the number negative 1. In other words, it's the same as... 16 minus 4 times negative 1, or 16 plus 4, which equals 20. All right, so there's a special word for 4 minus 2i and 4 plus 2i. They are called conjugates. And just like what happened in Algebra 1 when you multiplied a plus b times a minus b, the same thing occurs with um, complex numbers. 4 minus 2i times 4 plus 2i will get rid of a middle term, and actually it will even get rid of all um, imaginary numbers because the only thing you're left with is this i squared term, which becomes negative 1. Let's do at least one more problem practicing complex conjugates before, you un before we actually see how that applies to dividing complex numbers. So, for instance, let's do 3 minus 7i and First thing you have to ask yourself, what is the complex conjugate of 3 minus 7i? It would simply be 3 plus 7i. Let's multiply them and see what happens. The firsts are 3 times 3, or 9. The outers, 3 times 7i, or 21i. The inners, negative 21i. And the lasts or negative 7i squared. Remember, the middle terms go away. 21i minus 21i is 0. And then we end up with 9 plus 7, right? Because this becomes negative 1. And negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7, or 16. 
you may have noticed the pattern here. The pattern is um, you simply square the real number and add it to the coefficient before i. So square um, 3, get 9, and then add it to 7, and you get 16. It's always going to work out. Let's just, without doing all the multiplication, just uh, take a minute and mentally try to switch it up a little bit. Um, 11, 9, minus 12. Find, tell me, what are the uh, complex conjugates of 5 minus 2i and 11i minus 12? Okay, the complex conjugate of 5 minus 2i, I hope you um, see the pattern by now, would be 5 plus 2i. It's a little trickier. I thought I'd switch it up a little. Um, what, let's put the i over there, 11i minus 12. What is its complex conjugate? Well, it turns out its complex conjugate is just negative 11i minus 12. Right, it doesn't matter which goes first. I mean, you could rewrite this as negative 12 plus 11i. Then it would look like the ones we've been doing, which is the real number followed by the imaginary. And we, what we've always done for the complex conjugate is simply change the sign of the i term, right? So 11i minus 12 would have the complex conjugate of negative 11i minus 12. Okay, that's all fine and great, but this tutorial is about dividing complex numbers. So you may be wondering, what this has to do with complex conjugates, and it will be the first step of our um, division. It turns out when we multiply the, comp the complex, um, the division of the complex numbers here by the complex conjugate of the denominator, something neat will happen. So let's do that. Let's multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator or as we saw in the first um, question I think we did together the complex conjugate is 4 plus 2i. Now we can just look back at our first page here to see that 4 minus 2i times 4 plus 2i ends up giving us 20 and the neat thing about that was that the i's went away. Right, so we can just write 20 in the denominator and that was the goal of multiplying by the complex conjugate of the denominator. We would like to get rid of um, the imaginary terms and, and make a nice rational denominator. Alright, now the numerator is not going to be quite as pretty and we're going to have to foil these uh, term by term. Right, so you multiply the <clears throat> first, 3 times 4, which is 12, the outers, which is 6i, the inners, which is 4i, and then the lasts, which is going to be 2i squared. Alright, so now let's just simplify the top a little more. 6i plus 4i will give us 10i, and remember i squared here, this is the same as negative 1. So we can rewrite the numerator as 12 plus 10i minus 1 over 20. And then we can combine 12 and minus 1 to be 11. Oh, sorry, not minus 1. Uh, i squared was minus 1, and we have to multiply that by 2. Right? So it's 2 times negative 1, or minus 2. And we have 12 minus 2, or 10, plus 10i over 20. And you might notice that there's a common factor of 10, and this can be simplified to be 10 times 1 plus i over 20, and that reduces to i plus 1 over 2. Right? This last part was just simplifying a fraction. So let me step through this with you one more time. First, you want to find the complex conjugate of the denominator. Our goal is to create a rational denominator with a nice real number. Um, and we do that by multiplying by the complex conjugate. As we saw in our prior examples, when you multiply two complex conjugates, you end up with a nice number. 
So we get a 20 on the bottom. We did that on the prior um, page. And then the top, you just have to foil out. First outers, inners, lasts. And we get 12 plus 10i times, if you remember, i squared becomes negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 becomes negative 2. And the whole thing um, is pretty easy from there. So let's try this now. And let's move it up a little so that we have enough room. Let's divide 5 plus 3i by 2 minus 4i. If you remember the first step, find the complex conjugate of the denominator. And that would be 2 plus 4i. And we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of the, fra of the fraction by the complex conjugate. And we just have to foil it out. Okay, so let's do the numerator first. Multiply the firsts. 5 times 2 is 10 times the outers, which is 20i plus the inners, 3i times 2i, which, uh, sorry, 3i times 2, which is 6i, and the lasts, 3i times 4i, or 12i squared. Alright, that's an i. Complex conjugates, the first, 2 times 2 is 4, the outers, which is 8i, the inners, which is negative 8i, and the lasts, which is 16i squared, negative 16i squared. All right, so we end up on the top with 10 plus 26i minus 12, because remember, i squared is negative 1. Here we end up with 4 plus 16, because these cancel out, and negative 16i squared is positive 16. So now we're just simplifying. So 10 minus 12 is negative 2, plus 26i over 20. And if you want, you can factor out a 2 and simplify from there. All right, so just remember you find the complex conjugate of the denominator, multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by that conjugate, and simplify. Let's try one more problem. Let's do 2 minus 5i over 5i minus 2. There's a certain symmetry to this that you might find interesting or you might even remember from when you studied rational expressions. And um, that's, I think, a, this is a neat one to end the tutorial on. Okay, the first thing to remember is that the complex conjugate of 5i minus 2 is going to be negative 5i minus 2. And then once you realize that, you just multiply the top and the bottom by negative 5i minus 2 and see what happens. All right, good old foil. Do firsts, and you get negative 10i. Do the outers, which is minus 4. The inners which ends up giving you positive 25i squared, right? Negative times a negative. And the lasts, negative 5i times negative 2 is going to be positive 10i. The bottom will be 5i times minus 5i, or negative 25i squared. That's the firsts, the outers, will be negative 10i. The inners will be um, positive 10i, right? Because you have negative 2 times negative 5i, and that actually gives you positive 10i. Uh, and the last, which is positive 4, negative 2 times negative 2. Now this simplifies to be something interesting, which you may have remembered from rational expressions. Let's see. So negative 10i plus 10i the i terms are going to go away because we've got negative 10i plus 10i. So we're left on the top with negative 4 minus 25, right? Because i squared is negative 1, so this becomes negative 25. In the bottom, these go away, and here we have negative 25i squared, which is positive 25 plus 4, 
or negative 29 over 29, which becomes negative 1. You might have remembered immediately upon seeing the initial problem. Um, you probably studied something like this when you learned about rational expression. And it turns out anything in any algebraic expression in the, in the form of x minus y over y minus x always simplifies to be negative 1, whether you're dealing with complex numbers like 2 minus 5i over 5i minus 2 or x minus y over y minus x. And you can do the algebra to prove it. You can also just confirm this with yourself by just making up some numbers like make x3 and y4, any pair of numbers, as long as, as, long as x doesn't equal y, right? Because then we'd have 0 on the bottom. But let's make x3, y4, and you'll see that when we plug it in, we end up with 3 minus 4 over 4 minus 3 or negative 1 over 1. And that's just... It's just an interesting fact about x minus y over y minus x. That pattern always is negative 1, whether you're dealing with real numbers, rational expressions, um, or complex numbers. All right, that's it for multiplying, con uh, sorry, dividing complex numbers. Check out the website for other goodies.